Russia attempted to swing the United States election for one candidate. Uh, they have thus far paid very little price for that interference. And you know, there is a unique role that the United States Congress can play here. If you're worried that we're not going to look long and hard at what Russia did in our election because Trump won and Republicans in charge, you don't need to worry about that. We are. Because if we don't, it could be the Chinese and the Iranians next. It could be Republicans next time. So I'm with Sheldon, Senator McCain's leading the charge on armed services, and we have a good working team and in intel. I promise everybody in this room that Congress is gonna take a long, hard look at what Russia did to undermine our elections, so you'll be better prepared when they come your way. Efforts on the part of a president to undermine and manipulate the press, I think, are very dangerous, and I'm very worried about the statements that President Trump has made with that respect and about his overt efforts to manipulate the media in the United States. No one has any clue what the foreign policy of this administration is. There was head scratching in this hall when the vice president sat here and talked about our common values literally two days after the president of the United States opened up a full frontal assault on the free press. I hope that this administration gets its act together very quickly. The United States Congress, which has largely taken itself out of the game on foreign relations over the past two decades, doesn't have to any longer. And if we're really serious about this transatlantic connection, the values that underlie it, then we can say something about it in the United States Congress. Countries in the Persian Gulf region need to surmount the current state of division and tension and instead move in the direction of erecting realistic regional arrangements. It can perhaps start with a modest regional dialogue forum based on generally recognized principles and shared objectives. If you ask me what is the biggest news in the Middle East, I think that the first time since 48 that moderate Arab world, Sunni world, they understand that the biggest threat for them, it's not Israel, not Jews, and not Zionism, but Iran and Iranian proxy. Uh, Iran remains the single most, um, the, the biggest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. The Iranians are the only country in the region that has not been attacked by either Daesh or Al-Qaeda. And this begs the question, why? Iran is trying to make uh, Syria and Iraq a Shia, two Shia states, which is also very dangerous. More crimes, I'm afraid, have become the status quo in Syria. Assad must go, and this is not a slogan. This is a practical reality. I think a lot of people have a, have a problem seeing Bashar al-Assad as a normal guy. Uh, given the atrocities in, in Syria over, over uh, the last six years. So, sorry, but I believe that this is just for the people of Syria to take this position, whether they like or dislike uh, Bashar Assad. It's not our case to take a position of that, I believe. What happened in eastern Aleppo easily could be replicated in eastern Ghouta or in Idlib. You know, this strategy of starve and bomb the people into submission um, is the strategy of Assad, and they're going to pursue this if this, you know, ceasefire unless you're trying to feed somebody um, breaks down. Where is the U.S. in all this? Well, um, I can't tell you because I don't know. Thank you so much, all of you, for what I thought was a really important Munich Security Conference at a difficult moment in transatlantic history. Thank you very much. Get home safely.